Welcome, everyone, to Probability and Stats. Uh, this is week three of our our funness, and um, now we're actually getting into some really cool stuff. How you doing? Good. All right. So let's go over this. Why is that there? I don't really like it. All right. So I bet you've seen some of this, and I bet some of it will be super intuitive to you, but we're just going to go over it relatively quickly. Listen to Elliot Smith, by the way. Great rainy day music. All right, so frequency table is a way to collect a bunch of information uh, in an easy-to-read way. Um, and something you need, should know is that frequency is just another way of saying count. How many times does this happen? Um, now, when we make frequency tables, usually you put your options, well, I guess you want to see it like that, on the left-hand side, uh, and then to the right of each of your options, you just count or tally how many times they showed up. So, like in this case, uh, I would start by collecting all the individual options, right? So I got uh, one, two, three, four, and five. Those are my options, right? So I'll make a column with those options. One, two, three, four, and five. And then I just count how many times does a one show up? Um, I got a one right here. Oh, come on. Come on, you little ding dong. So I got a one right here. I got a one right here. So that's two ones, right? How many twos? I got one, two, three, four, five. I got five twos. How many threes? One, two, three, four. I feel like the cookie monster. How many fours do I have? One, two. And then how many fives do I have? One. Now, I can see how this could be confusing because you have two sets of numbers, right? One, two, three, four, five, and two, four, two, five, four, two, one. These on the right hand side, this column, are just the frequency. It's how many times did this number off to the left show up? How, how many ones are there? There's two ones. How many twos are there? There are five twos. How many threes are there? There are four threes. Uh, this is really important if you ever work a cash register. When you're counting the till at the end of the night, you have to f count how many uh, bills you have and how many coins you have. Now, are there any sixes in this number set? No. So if I were to ask, I'd put a zero right there. Um, good color. Uh, next, we can make a frequency chart with anything. So if I wanted to make a frequency chart out of this Animal Crossing picture, then I would say how many small rocks? There's one, two, three, four. So I'd say there's four small rocks. There's one, two, three, four, five big rocks. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. I think there's one right here, 13. So again, frequency tables, you can just, it's anything you want, you can make it out of anything. It's just counting how many things there are. The left side column is your, your things that you're counting, and these are the counts for the things that you've been counting. All right, so I can also work backwards though. So frequency tables are good in that way. So if I wanted to see how many total things I have, I just count the frequency. So two plus four, plus two, plus one, plus one, I wish I had a pen, is six, eight, ten. So there are ten different, I don't even know what this is, paper sold, I don't know. But this is a way that you can count to see a total. Boom. Baby! And you can also make groups out of frequency tables. So instead of having these gaps with the zeros right there, I can just say from 15 to 20, so that's or 15 to 19, so that's these two, I sold two. Okay, and the next thing is from 20 to 24. So 
that sold four, six, seven. Here's that seven. And then from 25 on, I have one. So groups is a handy way to like kind of shrink your data a little bit. Now dot plots are another way to count frequency. Now this time it's much more visual. So instead of like just usually having one thing to the left or one thing to the left and another thing to the right, like one like a one and then a three, saying that there are three ones. Now I have a whole line and I put dots above it indicating how many times it shows up. So we're kind of the we're doing an evolution of graphing right now. So um, you put dots above above your number. So let's say this was my data, and I'm actually this is a frequency table just kind of flipped on its side. So it says, how long did it take you to eat breakfast? So six people said zero minutes. So that means I would put six little dots above zero. One I'd put two. I like to keep the the dots on like kind of the same level, um, so it's easier for me to see what kind of distribution or shape the data makes. Okay, so again, this is uh, I only did five on that one. This is not a hugely big idea, right? I'm just taking five minutes, that means here's the minutes, and putting five dots. It's actually almost easier to do from a frequency table than if I just had a random assortment of data. Now look at this one. This is important. Six and zero. So six minutes, but I have zero, so I put no dots. Same for seven, right? Zero. Eight. I got two. Nine. I got three. Ten. I got seven. I'm just going to go, whoa. It's just a little bit more than zero. Eleven. I've got four. Gosh, I wish I had a pen. You know what I'm saying? 12, I got one. So this is kind of cool because now I can see a shape. So my data kind of dips down, goes up, got a little dip, goes up, goes down, goes back up, shoots up, really, and it goes back down. So it's like most people are either zero or 10 minutes, so they're obviously just not very aware. Okay. So if I did uh, have this frequency table, again, I can just put dots where I see them. 19, there's 0. 20, I got 4. It's just a helpful way of seeing our data. Just one other way. Not bad, not bad. OK. All right, so I can also go backwards. So look at this reasons I went to the bathroom dot plot. So how many times did I go to the bathroom? Well, I went to the bathroom. Now this is, this gets a little tricky because you could technically say, you could imagine, well, when I went in the bathroom to fart, I also pooped. But let's just say every time, each one of these dots is an individual time they went to the bathroom. So how many times did I go to the bathroom? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. I went to the bathroom 20 five times. If each one of those is an individual time I went to the bathroom. Okay, so now for you can also read sorry, I got a, I got an email from Laura. <laughs> for you can also read these graphs to see um, maximums and minimums. So for what reason did I go to the bathroom the least for? That means that the one that has the least amount of dots. So I only had to barf twice. So that's good. And what reason did I go to the bathroom the most for? Hand washes, right? This is the time for it. So the one with the most is the one that obviously has the reason why I went to the bathroom the most. And the one that has the least is the one I have the least for. All right, we're doing good. Histograms, another way to show it. Now, usually with histograms, you have ranges. So it's it looks like a bars, but the bars are touching each other because they're in these little sections. So um, the frequency is just going to be the height 
of these sections. So the ranges of these look like every five. Now on Khan Academy they'll be easier to read but when you see these in a newspaper or on a website or, or if you're making it yourself usually they make them so that they read kind of funky. So see how the x-axis, this bottom graph, or this bottom axis goes 40 to 60. So that means this is probably 50 right in the middle, right? This line, and that's probably 70. And this is 90. Uh, and so on, right? 110, 120, 130. Now, there's a trick. I could either count this box as 40 to the edge of 50, which would be 49, right? Everything from 40 up to 49. Because we, we kind of have to, it's like, it's like if you actually had buckets lined up, you can't have, we can't have both of these be at 50, right? Let's say, this one's 40 to 49. The glass one right here starts at 50. We have to start somewhere. So that's why these can be a little tricky to, to see because uh, it depends on what you read. Or I could see this as um, 41 to 50 and then this one starts at 51. So it really depends on, on uh, how you read the table. But that's kind of a, don't worry about it right now. Let's just keep going. So if I want to make this into a histogram, I could make a bucket that goes from 15 and then another one that starts at 20 and then the last one starts at 25 and goes up to 30. Now I could make it like this or I could do, well this box is going to be 15 to 19. Either way, this one, this way is way more explicit and like um, direct in how you you're saying something uh, and then the y-axis is going to be the frequency oh man that's good All right, let's say one two three four five six oh perfect All right, now let's make some boxes uh, different color what color do you want oh you want yellow okay yellow is beautiful so if 15 to 19 has two a height of two, right? Here's two. Next one has a height of seven, so I go up to seven, make that little box. 25 to 29 only has one. Look at that, I did it. That looks like a weird thing. All right, so now we let's read these histograms. So again, you can count, uh, you can count by counting the height. So this one goes up to in between four and two. Oh, that's an ugly color. Let's get a better color going. So in between four and two is three. So this box is three. This box is three. How tall is this box? That's eight. This box is 10. This box looks like it's hitting that in between. So five and this one's at two. So let's count three plus three plus eight plus 10 plus five plus two each. How do you how do you count this stuff? To me, I look for ten, so I, I know that like eight and two combine to a ten. Add another ten, you got twenty. Add a six, you got twenty-six plus five, so thirty-one. We've got thirty-one trees. Alright, now this gets a little more I like this stuff. Uh, the comparison stuff. So how many more trees were in the 75 to 79? So here there's 10 trees then in the 65 to 69. So so this one had 10, this one had 3. How many more? We got 7. What's 10 minus 3? 7. Okay. Now this one's tricky. How many were at least 80 feet? So that means I go to 80 feet and this this box is at least 80 feet and this box. So I'm actually adding. So again, seven. Didn't even do that on purpose. But that's these are the different types of questions. So total, um, comparing two ranges, and then giving you like at least or we're less than. 
and that that usually you're going to have a combination of of bars. All right, stem and leaf. These ones are confusing to me. I just I don't like them. I don't know why we use them, but we do sometimes. They're actually really handy when you're trying to count stuff. Um, and the way you make it is you put all your digits of ten on the left hand side. You put a line. And then every time you have a number after it, it means that tens and then that number. And so if you have multiple of the same number on the right, it means you have multiple of that number. So let me just show you an example. Right, so this stem and leaf, all these numbers right here are in the, the 0, 10 column. Because it means none of them are bigger than 10. So this 0 means like 0, 1. 0, 1. It just means one. You don't really, you wouldn't, no one really wouldn't write a zero anyway, but it's, it's a way to delineate or make clear that um, we're in the, in the zero to nine category of numbers. So each time I have a number, it means it's showing up. So I have, a, I have a two ones, I have one, two, three, four, five, six twos, one, two, three, four, four threes, two fours, and one five. Not bad, but let's keep going. So here's a little more complicated. So on the left-hand side are my 10 columns. So here are the 10s and here are the 20s. So 18, I got two 18s. That means here's one 18, and then that one goes to this. So I have this kind of gets translated into an 18 and an 18. It gets more handy the higher you get, if that makes sense. So like 100. Yeah, anyway, all right, so now we got this, we got how many 20s? We got 20 here, 20 here, 20 here, so four 20s, that's what that part is. Now we got a 22, a 22, a 23, and 25. Sorry, I just got tagged on an Instagram post. Um, so you'll notice that there isn't a 24. There's no four here. It's because there are no 24s. There's no 21s. There's no 19s. Okay, they're they're tricky, but they're not the best. Uh, and you can also, I mean, one of the things that's useful is that you can see the biggest and smallest really easily. So the biggest will be twenty five, smallest will be eighteen. Not the not the best. All right, so now now we start getting into comparing and understanding graphs. And uh, one thing you need to see. is um, box and whisker plots. Uh, you may or may not have seen these before, and we'll get into how to make them later. Uh, they're super handy for quartiles, which is another term we'll get into, but it's basically um, breaking something into, into fourths. And usually when we think of dividing things into four, we, we want to make them even, but uh, real life is not even and so box and whisker plots show us where uh, the majority of things are and then where our extremes are and they call it a box and whisker plot because you got your box usually in the middle and then it's got whiskers coming off the side um, and it's a way to describe or show display the distribution and the distribution just means again the shape of our data so Box and whisker plots look like these things here. Here's one, here's one. And the box part, also called the interquartile range, which means between uh, one, two, three, two and three quarters, two and three, that means the majority of your data is in this section. Don't have to know exactly what that means yet, but if we look at uh, a sweet little line graph down here um, you can kind of tell like you've seen these graphs before I'm sure but uh, the majority of the data is underneath the curve right here in the middle it's called a bell shape but we'll get to that later but anyway on a box and whisker plot you've got your box and you got your whiskers Whip. that's just where the there's less data but there is still data out that far so um, when 
what you'll mostly need to know is like, where's that middle box compared to your whiskers? Uh, is it right in the middle? Is it off to one side? Is it off to the other side? This is what you need to know for right now. So there's three different types of distributions and there's actually multiple ways of talking about them. But for bar graphs and, or histograms and for box and whisker plots, um, you've got symmetrical, which is what they call normal, which is where uh, if you made a line down the middle, both sides are kind of the same, right? This side and this side are the same. Left skewed means I'm, I've got a tail. Another way is to say I've got a, left skewed is the same as saying I've got a, a left, a left tail. Uh, and just imagine like an animal uh, that has a tail. <laughs> like here's a stegosaurus tail, or here's a cat tail. Yeah, this is a beautiful cat, isn't it? Meow. Now it's a raccoon. Okay. So left skewed, right skewed, those are when, when most of your data is on one side. You can kind of see right here. Remember the box is what we're looking at. We have a box and it's got like a short whisker over here and then a long whisker over here. That, that right skewed is technically meaning that there's a data point on that side that's pulling your data off in that direction. So left skewed, most of the data is to the right, the big box to the right, but your, your left sided tail pull is pulling the data in a way that we'll actually see, we'll do some math about it but just look for for like where most of the data is the clumps and then whatever side has like just a little bit off to i mean like a little bit meaning like uh like this is that's kind of confusing which way is it like leaning if i was leaning i don't know am i leaning this way am i leaning this way because this is right leaning and this is left leaning but just try to make like a tail this wouldn't be a tail that's like a bobcat tail not a real tail come on give me some real tails all right so that's what you need to know for distributions now reading graphs you got a couple different things variability that's like how widespread is your data so if we look at these test scores first period has a larger range so it's more variable than second period Second period is more clumped, it's smaller range, right? It goes from 70 to 95. That's smaller than first period, which is 60 to 98. Now, lowest and highest, you look at both graphs. So the lowest on second period is 70, and the lowest on first period is 60. So first period's got the lowest, right? But then look at the highest. Second period's got 95. It looks like first period has like a 98. What a what a smarty pants. So even though first period has the lowest, they actually also have the highest. So be careful when they're when you're taking when you're looking at questions about lowest and highest. Now on average, that means where are where's your boxes? So specifically, if I was gonna say who had a bigger average, I'd look at the boxes of these two and at their they're median lines. So these lines are important. So luckily both of these, the boxes and the lines follow the same pattern, but yeah, let me erase if I can. Now let's erase everything. Okay, so this box goes from 75, it's about 90. This one goes from 80 to 92 maybe 91 so already i can tell that on average period two did better because this is the chunk of the data this is the most of the data but i can also tick by this median so if your medians the median is a good indicator of averages for for schools or for other things so this median is at 80 and this median's at 85. So, I mean, come on. It's pretty clear, isn't it? Uh, 
Uh, that's it for today, I guess. So I want you to... I don't know. Just do do well. Be well. Hope, hope you're hanging in there. Uh, listen to Elliot Smith. And yeah. Mm, hopefully someone... Someone come to my uh, office hours one of these days. Right. Talk to you later, ding dongs. Oh, come on, come on. Stop recording. Hello, hello.